Hey guys, and welcome back. I know it's been such a super long break, and I hope everyone will uh, join me in hoping that the second half of 2020 is a lot more harmonious and peaceful than the first half. Uh, with that out of the way, if you'd like to stick around to the end of the movie, I'll have a couple little updates for you guys. But otherwise, let's just jump straight into it with today's video. So what we're going to be making today uh, is called a Panini Projection, which uh, sounds uh, kind of strange, but I can, I can uh, sort of illustrate what's going on uh, just here in the here in the default level. So by default, uh, all cameras in uh, Unreal Engine use a projection method for perspective, like for, for real world sort of depth and perspective. And we can see what that does to the camera. If we look here at the stairs, anything toward the middle of the screen is going to appear uh, correctly and, and nicely. But as we move things towards the outer edges, so you can you can see that there's there's distortion. There's a sort of warping effect that occurs when we get to the edges of the screen. And that's due to the way that the camera is uh, sort of organizing the, the scene in front of us. So what we're going to do is try and flatten that out, uh, which, which has a few different sort of applications. Like if you, if you imagine um, like top-down RTS games, they would use a panini projection so you don't get that warping in the corners. Or uh, actually what, what got me onto, onto looking into this was Call of Duty, where no matter what field of view you would set the, uh, the player's camera, the gun in the corner would always appear uh, appear relatively the same. So we're going to explore that and uh, have a little play around with some material functions and that kind of thing. And we don't need anything to get started. In fact, I'm going to include a, a couple links uh, in the description of the video below. One to the Unreal Engine documentation page about Panini Projection and another to a Blueprint UE page where you can uh, copy and paste the actual code for the Panini function. And that's what we're going to do first. So let's come down here to our content browser Let's right click here, go to materials and textures and make ourselves a material function. Let's call this uh, Panini projection underscore MF for material function and we'll open this up. So all a material function is, is a, well, it's a lot like a blueprint function. It's a little encapsulated piece of code that we can reuse, you know, in, in any material that we want. And from our blueprint UE, I have this here text file which has in HLSL, or at least the Unreal Engine sort of form of HLSL, a uh, material function. So I'm going to select everything with Control A, copy with Control C, move this out of the way. And then when I hit Control V here in the graph, we get our, our function. So we'll just cruise up our output result here, and we'll just hook that up. As we see, it's even got comments, and, and we got some some comment windows here, so we can have a bit of a closer look at how exactly this node's gonna work. There are a few uh, little custom nodes here. There's not much in the way of actual code in them, just some inputs and an output. And um, for the purposes of this video, we're not going to sort of explore the actual Panini projection function in too much depth because it's right there on Blueprint UE for you to copy and paste. I'm just gonna show you how to use it properly. So let's save this material function and we can close this window because we don't need it anymore and then come back here in our uh, content browser. Oh, and I should have mentioned there, as you might have said, I've got the first person character open. That's because we'll be working with the first person character template, just the default blueprint. I've just disabled the, the projectile because I was playing with it a little bit earlier. And let's continue. So we'll come down here into our uh, content browser again, right click, materials, textures, make ourselves a second uh, material function. And we'll call this one gun FOV underscore mf because the general sort of uh, principle that we'll be working with is that we're going to be applying a material function to an existing material and uh, apply this projection to it with using the uh, the world offset uh, that will make a little more sense as we as we move on anyway so here in our gun fov material function let's right click we want a make where is it make material attributes node because in our uh, in our regular materials we'll just be a uh, setting the, uh, the material attributes. We won't be using you know, the default output node. And then we'll come over here into an input in. Function input, material attributes. It will be set by default if we come out of this make material attributes. This is to give us a preview just so that it compiles properly. But here in our actual material, we'll be using one of these nodes and plugging it into our uh, input in. Then out of our material attributes here, let's get material attributes. And the only one that we want down here in our get types is world, where is it? World position offset. Okay, then we'll just make ourselves a little bit of space here. Let's come out of here into a function. We need a function call. Uh, where are we, material function? 
let's just right click right here. Go function material function call. Can't use that material function as it calls a circular dependency. Uh, I think it's referring to the unspecified function, which is okay because we don't need the unspecified one. We need the Panini, the Panini projection, which already has uh, some inputs here that we can use and a result. So out of our material attributes from this get node here, let's set material attributes. And just like before, we want to grab our world position offset and we can plug the result of our material function straight into here and then the result of our set node into our output results. There we go. Okay, so it's telling us that we need some inputs here. Uh, let's just save this and uh, head back to our uh, content browser here. We'll right click in materials and textures once more. What we want is an MPC, a material parameter collection. And we'll call it FOV underscore MPC. And these will hold, or this rather, will hold our uh, scalar values for our inputs in our, um, in our material function. So we don't have to actually use any blueprints or anything. We can just manipulate, um, manipulate our functions here. Alternatively, you could use a material instance. I just thought this was a little bit more sort of convenient. Didn't actually have to have a, a um, you know, an instance open. And you could reuse this for as many different things as you want. Anyway, without further ado, let's make ourselves a couple of variables here. We're gonna need uh, two, three. So we'll spread these out. We'll need one called depth, another called scale, and a third that we'll call skew. Here we go, so let's save those. We can close our MPC now, and then over here in our gun FOV material function, let's right click, and we want a parameter, collection parameter. There we go, we'll hit this little arrow here just to save some space. We want the FOV MPC, which is going to hit by default. Uh, that's because we have it selected here in the content browser. And we'll just need one for each of our, for each of our new scalar parameters. So it's got depth, scale, and skew. And we can plug these into depth, goes into D, uh, skew goes into S, and scale in screen space scale. And uh, the result of our get material attributes here, this world position offset, will be funneling through our Panini projection before we head to our set and then into our output result. And with that, we are finished. So this is what the uh, final function looks like. Uh, it contains our previous function here, which we can double click and have a look at that too. I know it looks a little bit intimidating, but uh, it's, it's, it's really not that that complicated. It's just picking a pixel basically and, and, and um, correcting its uh, location or sort of displacing pixels to give that, um, that flattened out Panini look. Well, uh, there we go, so let's save. We can close some of these things now. We can close our gun FOV material function. And then here in our uh, first person character, all we'll do, let's just grab our gun, find the material for the gun, which should be in your FP weapon folder if you have the first person assets already installed. And we'll go ahead and double click this to open it up. To a lot of uh, newbies, these materials, like the UE4 man body and the FP gun, they look a little bit strange because there's no, um, you know, there's no material node, but that's what this little guy over here at the end is. We're only using material attributes. So if you want to use this in your own materials, you see to come down here, hit use material attributes and you get this little node. And then if you want to use your conventional uh, base color, specular, metallic, all of that sort of thing, you need a make material attributes node. And then you can plug in whatever you want into, into these inputs here. And then the output just goes into uh, the final material attributes node. But we don't need that because we have our material function. In fact, we can grab sort of any one of these functions here. I'm just going to duplicate this and convert it to our gun field of view. Then we just plug this in, the result into our material attributes. We save our material and we're good to go. Uh, so there was a little bit of compiling time there as well while it uh, sorts out this new uh, material function, but we can save that and close it. And then over here back in our, um, back in our main editor window, if we find out where we put our uh, little files here, let's hit play to grab our first person character. And as you can see, there's no gun. We don't have any defaults set to our, uh, to our uh, NPC. So I'm gonna hit the tilde key, the console key, so unlock my mouse here, but uh, keep the game running. Then we can open up our NPC, which I'm going to tear off. And then uh, we can set, set some values here. Like I said, everything to one. Uh, we get things that look like, basically like, uh, you know, like, like, like how they are by default. And then we can affect these figures here to change how our gun is going to look, our, our field of view. Everything from the, the depth 
so we can make it look like there's a much wider field of view uh, <laughs> at, at the gun level. Or we can bring it in uh, much closer with some higher values, even uh, increase the scale if we so choose. Uh, obviously, as you can see, it's not affecting the hand of the mannequin, but with the exact same material functions, you can apply the exact same thing to the uh, to the UE4 man body. In fact, I might just do that now, just as a as an exercise. So let's uh, close that out, head back to our first person character. Let's grab our arms here. So this is the UE4 man body. It shares the same material as the full mannequin. And when we open it up, you see it looks very, very similar to our uh, gun gun material. So I'm just gonna do like I did before, grab this material function here, change it to our gun field of view, and then just hook it up. It'll have to compile some shaders again. Then when we hit save, it'll apply our material function. Okay, cool. <laughs> so we, we, have, we have some interesting uh, preview there. Uh, I kind of like that, it's kind of egg-shaped. Sort of, you can see how it's sort of warping the, uh, the sphere there. So anyway, let's head back uh, to our main editor window here. We'll hit play again, and I'll grab uh, my mouse control. Here we go. And then we can go back to our material folder. Where are we? Here we go, our material parameter collection. And now the hands and the gun are going to be working in tandem, or rather they'll be they'll be matched. They'll be uh, <laughs> they'll be using these same values because we're using a material parameter collection. Uh, both of these different materials, even though they are different materials, they're using the same function, and within that function is these scalar variables. If you want a different ones, all you need to do is just use um, scalar values in your in your material. You could even uh, modify it ever so slightly. Say if we just very quickly head back to our uh, material here. Because so we could even uh, open this up and instead of using our uh, material parameter here, we could just get some, some input nodes, change these to scalar, and then uh, hook these up in place of the NPCs. And obviously naming them something that, that makes sense. And then when we save this, just like that, here we go. So it's come up an error because I've already got this material open and it's created this input for us to use. And we can use this on a per material basis if you want to have different field of view for different elements on screen, uh, all, that, all that kind of jazz. But I think for the sake of this video, this is a, uh, you know, th th this works perfectly fine. And it gives us a consistent result across two different materials. So anyway, that, uh, that basically brings us to the end of this, of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something. And uh, I will catch you in the next one. Oh, and just as a final note, I'm gearing up for more regular updates in the future. So every week or two, I should have a new video out, hopefully a little bit more frequently while I sort of get back into the habit of things. The last few months has, uh, has been fairly hard on me, uh, but I won't put you guys down with that kind of thing. I just want to let you know that uh, I'm back. I'm going to be making more videos. And I hope you guys stick around for the future. Remember, the easiest way you can contact me is on Discord. I'm lurking there sort of most of the time. And, and I, I try to keep up with, with all the messages, but there, there, there are a lot. So uh, please be patient. If I don't reply to you straight away, it doesn't mean that I'm ignoring you. It's just, uh, it, it's, it's just been hard these last few months, and I'm sure everyone can relate. Uh, so that's all I wanted to say. Uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks so much to all my new subscribers. I know it's been a long time between videos. Uh, um, I'm, I'm really hoping that this, uh, this changes in the future, more frequent uploads, better content, that kind of thing. And I got some, uh, some bigger things in the, in the works too. There's a, a very important multiplayer video that I'll be releasing as soon as I possibly can. And, um, yeah, I, I, you know what, I, I won't, I won't share any more of my secrets. I'll just catch you guys in the next video. Thanks again.